Our subject for today is going to be the secret place God desires you to dwell in. The secret place God desires you to dwell in. As you get the word together, we stand and read the word. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and on his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy, my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the foot. Peace. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before your presence right now, God. God, ask me, God, that we might be you, God. God, that you would increase on today. God, we ask you, God, that those ears to hear, God, what the Spirit has to say to the church on today. And God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our thy sight, in our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Subject again, the secret place God desires. To d- desires you to dwell in. The secret place God desires you to dwell in. Amen. They that dwell in a secret place. Y'all know where that secret place is within him. Amen. God wants each and every one of us to dwell in the secret place. Amen. It's in him. Um, it's in him that we live, that we move, that we have our being on today. And God wants us to realize that the only safe place in the whole world is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. In the secret place, you're in the presence of the Lord, Felicia. It, amen. When you get in that secret place with God, you will know that you're there because nothing in the world can shake you one way or the other. Because you're in that place of rest. Amen. God desires us to rest in Him. He says that He is our God. He is always going to be with us. He's never going to be. He's never going to forsake us. But He wants us to realize that we have to dwell in Him. What it means to dwell is to live in Him, to abide in Him. But I like this other, this last one that I saw this morning. They said to keep your attention directed toward. To keep your attention directed toward God. God desires us to dwell in Him, to keep our attention focused on Him, not on us. But so many times, a lot of us we get caught up in what's going on around us and what. Everything is happening in our lives and in the lives of people all around us. But God wants to keep our focus at all times upon Him. He wants us to dwell in Him. He said, to dwell means to abide also. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can act what you will. Amen? So He wants us to find ourselves abiding in Him, living in Him. Our whole life has to be hid in Him. He wants us to trust in Him with all of our hearts. 
You don't want to believe God. I don't understand and try to figure out what it is that you're doing in my life right now, God. But God, I want to be led by you. He will lead us and He will guide us into all truth. No matter what's going on in our life, He don't want us to be concerned about it because He is yet in control. No matter what was going on in Job's life, God knew that Job was going to come out victorious. Amen. If he lost everything he had, and I'm sure that Job began to get frustrated knowing that I done lost it all. All my children I did. I lost all my livestock. I lost my horses and my sheep. I lost everything. And then in the end, I guess you might as well say he lost his wife because she told him to curse God and die. And they never mentioned her again. Amen. But he lost it all. Even his friends come to him and they were saying things that make it feel like that he was really in sin and he knew that he wasn't in sin, but he found himself in a place that he began even to murmur and to complain in his own self. Amen. And that's the way we do is we'll complain to ourselves about what's going on in our life. But do you not know that everything that goes on in your life, that God is yet in control. Amen. And God is allowing whatever it is to come your way to test you to see whether or not you're going to enter into the trial and come out victorious. Amen. My Bible tells me that when Jesus died on the cross, he took the victory for us. Amen. And therefore, if Jesus has taken the victory, we got to know that the victory belongs to us. He said, Nay, in all these things that we're more than conquerors through him that loves us. Amen. Amen. And therefore, if you know that you're more than a conqueror, then you got to act like it. Amen. you got to know that I'm dwelling in God. I'm abiding in him. Amen. That I'm covered by him. He said, He will cover us with his feathers. Uh-huh. And under his wings shall we trust. Uh, as long as we stay covered by God. Amen. I was looking up a word this morning that said pinion. It's talking about the feathers that, of the bird. And he was talking about how that the pinion was going in and it would hook up under that person and hold him up. That's what God is doing. He covers us with his feathers. Amen. Yes. And under his wings that we trust, we don't have to worry about where we go from here. Amen. All we have to do is rely on God and know that if God started a work in you, that he's going to finish it. Amen. 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 You will come out victorious. It does not matter how it feels. It does not matter how it looks. The thing that we have to be concerned with is that God got you there. Amen. Amen. Whether we come out victorious is up to us. Because we've already won the victory. God has already done that for us. And we, uh, if we really allow him to. If we know who we are, and we're not allowing the devil to tell us which way to go, then we will know that God got me. He said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to go the second day to say it. That even if I, if I make my bed in hell, that God is going to be there, no matter where we are. The worst place that we could be in life, God is right there. And all he wants us to do is look up and live. He said, look to the ears from this coming to your head. Because all of your head come from God. God desires us to know that if we stay under that shadow, if we stay up under the word of God, if we stay up under the spirit of God, and live like he said to him and do what he say to him, then we don't have to worry because we trust in him. No matter what is going on in our life, we have to trust him. He said, sure he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the north of heaven. There's so much pestilence in the world. Yes. So much sickness, so much disease in the world. But the Bible has already told us that by sight that we heal. Amen. So therefore, we should not fret about the things that's going on in our lives. Amen. Amen. I tell you, over true goes last week. I mean, I have been sick for a year, I guess. All, all of my body for a whole year. Amen. And I thought that it was one thing, but a man of God, he was praying Sunday evening at church that evening. And he came over and he whispered in my ear and he told me that the Lord was healing my body. And the Lord healed me. Amen. I had told no lie and then I felt. I, did, I was not murmuring and complaining. I was waiting on God. Amen. Amen. And he would heal me. And God healed me on Sunday evening. Amen. And I know that I'm healed. And you know what? No matter how that the enemy will bring back sins. Y'all know that when the enemy knows that you're sick, he'll bring back sins to make you receive what you had before. But the devil is alive. He tells me a lie all week. Amen. Because he wants to tell me, no, you're not healed. You're not, you're not uh, what you say. No, you know you're still sick. you still hurt. you still the, the devil ain't done nothing like that. I'm healed by the stripes of God. He said it over 2,000 years ago that I was healed by the stripes of God. Therefore, I know that I'm here alone today. Amen. Man. And so the sickness, it won't touch us unless we allow it. 
So follow them that believe. He said we should lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said call for the elders of the church. Yes. And they'll pray the prayer of faith and you'll be healed. Amen. That's what the word of God says. So we got to believe the word of God. We got to do what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. He said his truth shall be our shield and brother. It shall be our covering. It should be our protection. The word of God is our protection from everything that the enemy can bring against us. When we bring it against our mind, spirit, body, or soul, we have the word of God to stand against whatever it is. Amen. We have to speak the word over our life. Amen. Amen. The devil desires us to speak negativity. He desires us to not say what God says. But the Bible tells us that out of your mouth comes life and death. If we speak life out of our mouth, then we'll see life. When we speak death, then we'll see death. But we got to believe that what we say out of our mouth, that God is going to do whatever it is that we say. You mean? Because we, we are dwelling in God. We are resting in Him. We're not resting in ourselves and what we can do because we're nothing without God. God needs us to be willing and obedient to do whatever it is He says and to believe that He is God and beside Him there is none other. And he is a deliverer to them that diligently seek him. God wants us to believe that he's God. Amen. He wants us to rely on him, to trust in him that he is God. Yes, he is our God. He is our Father. Our friend, he's our Lord, he's our Savior. He's our everything. He's our shelter in a time of trouble. Amen. He's our habitation. Amen. I want to dwell in God. I want to be inhabited by Him. He is already on the inside of me. He has came and made his habitation in me, in who you are. So therefore, you've got to allow Him to live. Yes, sometimes the enemy will come and He will say this or that, but God is there. And He's speaking to you and He's telling you, go that way, don't go this way. Do this, don't do that. Don't go that way. That's the wrong way to go. Don't, go. don't follow after this person. Don't follow after that one. Follow me. Follow Christ. Don't follow after a person. Don't be caught up in a man or a woman. Don't be caught up in me. Amen. But I want you to be caught up in the God that's in me. And know that I'm living like God said here. Because I'm going to tell you something. We're living in a day when man do not want to live like God said here. Amen. God said that holiness is right. Amen. He said, hold this one down. No man ain't going to see him. Amen. So therefore, we want to see God face in peace. So therefore, we're going to believe what he's already said. He said, I can dwell in the shame. I can just rest in God and I don't have to worry about nothing. He said, be anxious for nothing but in all things. Give thanks. Amen. Give thanks. Amen. No matter what is going on in your life, give thanks because he said, this is the will of God that concerns you. No matter what it is, and sometimes what we go through in life does not feel good. Amen. But we have to realize that God is right there with us. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. All we want us to do is rest in him. Do not let our hearts be troubled. He said, you believe in God, but he's also in me. Amen. God is going to match his amen for his people. Amen. Those that have dwelt in him, that have allowed him to dwell in them richly. Amen. God is building a thing of habitation for us. But even before then, we can dwell in him right here. We can rest in him right now. Amen. We can abide in him. He's our refuge and our fortune, which is our protection. Yes, he is. He's our protection. Amen. He's everything that is us to be. Amen. He is going to prosper us because he said that he is. Amen. He said, love. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell, even as a soul prosper. So therefore, if you believe that God will prosper you, then it shall come to pass. Amen. Amen. And if God spoke over the church on, on the other day when we were in prayer, and they began to tell us that God was getting ready to bless the people of God that live in water, that he's going to bless them with jobs, better jobs, Amen. more money, more revenues. More finances, amen. He's going to bless them with cars, amen. Somebody must need a new car. He said he's going to bless them with cars. He's going to bless them with homes, amen. God is able to do what he said. And I think some of the ladies have already been God blessed with them a place to live. So God is already working to do whatever he said that he was going to do, amen. So God wants us to trust him that he is our God. He is our friend that's sticking closer than any brother can stick to us. God loves us with an everlasting love. 
And all he wants us to do is to believe that he is able to do anything. It is nothing too hard for God. Not anything in your life. Sometimes it seems like some things come against us. There's more than we can bear, but it's not more than we can bear because somebody needs more water. It's not more than you can bear. God will not put anything more on us than we can bear. Nobody in here. Sometimes it seems like it's more than we can bear. The things that, that come into our life, it's more than we can even fathom, but it's no more than you can bear. Just bear up under the child. Just believe that God got you wherever you are. No matter what's going on in our lives, sometimes it may not be pretty, it may not be what you would have to be going on in your life, but God knows your heart. Rest in Him. Know that He is there and He's waiting for you, for you to just do one thing, to believe. Only believe. He said all things are possible to them that believe. We have to believe that He is able to do whatever it is that we need. God is able. Brother even the young man that the lady called over there for you, God is able. You take care of him and, and get in touch with her because she really wants to keep an eye on him to make sure that he's okay over there at that school where you're at. Amen. So to take the burden off of her so she don't worry so about him. Amen. See, people are concerned about people today. Amen. And if they're concerned about it, we should be that much more concerned. Amen. We are concerned about the souls of people all over the industry. Amen. I know there ain't nobody here in the church but from him. We got Brother Clay there and, and Sister Lady down from him. But God is going to say in this city. Amen. I believe that God is going to do what he said. Amen. Amen. I know that all the church is everywhere. But there's some people out there that's got little water's name rolled on them, marked on them. Amen. And God is going to bring them to this house. Amen. That they might begin to live a life free and separated. Amen. From sin and everything that would hinder them from being a life. Amen. I thank God. Praise the Lord on today because I know that I am a light to the world. I know that God has called me for a purpose. Amen. Everybody in this room, you have a purpose for your life. God did not just call me. He called each and every one of us. And God does not have a respect of person, Abigail. Amen. He loves each and every one of us. And He has a work for each and every one of us. And if we allow Him, He'll take us and He'll take those rough places in our life and He'll smooth them out. Yes. Amen. He will cause us to walk in high places. Amen. God is going to cause us to walk in high places. Yes. And he is going to call that deep person back to that deep that He's called us to. There's a deep out there, y'all. Yes. Amen. There's a place in God that He's called us to. And the only way that we're going to be able to walk in that place, we got to begin to get to that place where He dwells at. He, we want to dwell in Him. Amen. We want to abide in Him. We want to live in Him. We want to allow Him to have free will. He needs us, all of us. Everything that's in us, He needs everything. He don't need part of us. He don't need the part that you don't want to give Him. you got to give Him all of us. Amen. Everything that's in you that's not like God, you got to give Him everything so that He can completely dwell. Because as we dwell in Him, see, some of us want to go out into the ends and out of the world. Some of us just out there hanging in the house for a wheel of breath every now and then when we need to get love. And then some of us, when the things begin to get bad, we'll get in the inner court, we'll begin to pray real hard for a little while, a season. And then we'll stop again. But some of us, and this is where God wants to take each and every one of us, He wants to take us into the holy of holies. Amen. Where we can sit down at His feet and He can speak to us and tell us which way He would have us to go. Where He can tell us what it is that He has for each and every one of our lives. Amen. And how are we going to get to the Holy of the Holy? We're going to pray. Amen. We're going to worship. And as we worship, we're going to begin to pray. And we're going to begin to just meditate on Him. And before we know it, we're going to be directly at His feet. And we're going to be worshiping. He's going to be telling us, I want you to and Joshua, I need you to do this. And they need to do that in play. I want you to do that. He's going to tell you what it is that he would have you to do. Because it's a work that God needs to be done. 
and he's going to put together a people to do this work. We went to a conference on the other night in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the, and the name of the conference was the remnant. A remnant. God is calling out a remnant of people. Amen. To do his work. Everybody is not going to do the work that God has called us to. Amen. It's those that have made up their mind that they're going to dwell in that secret place. There's a secret place in God, hallelujah, that he wants us to come to. Amen. And when we get to that secret place, when people meet us, they're going to know that we've been in the secret place. Amen. Because they're going to find themselves coming to you and begin to just lay out their life before you. They don't know why. They just don't care. You know, Shema, I, I, I went through this. And I went through that, and I went through this and that, and this and that. And they're going to begin to just roll out their life before you. And the reason that they're doing it is so you can help them. Amen. So you can pray for them. So you can listen to what they're saying. If you listen to what they're saying, you'll be able to tell them what God is saying. Because you're listening to God, and you're listening to them. Amen. Because you have been in the secret place with God. You're going to know exactly what to tell them. You're not going to tell them what you think. You know, nobody needs to know what you think. They need to know what God is saying. They need to know what God is saying to them. People need a word from the Lord. Amen. They need a rhyme word from the Lord. A life-giving word. It's got to come from God. They need it on the end of the hour. And they are looking for a word. And they're looking for somebody that's not going to take and judge them, but they want somebody that's going to love them. All the way to Christ. Amen. Because the Bible says the love of God is what's going to draw to Him. Yes. Amen. So we have got, we've got to get to that place, to that secret place. i got to get there more. Amen. i got to get in that word and hide myself in that All of us, we've got to hide ourselves in that word. we got to begin to just meditate on the word. And we got to begin to just... Praise Him and worship Him in the midst of everything that's going on. No matter what, we can always keep a heart work. Do you not know that you worship God at all? Amen. When you walk down the street, you're worshiping God. But as you live a holy life, that's worship to God because you're living like He told you to live. Amen. You're being a doer of the Word, not just a hearer of that which you hear. Amen. But you're doing what God says. You're living like God said it is. Amen. You're being led by the Spirit of God. On that road that's less traveled by man. Because so many people don't want to live on that road. They don't want to walk on that road. That narrow path that leads to Jesus. Amen. People don't want to be on that road. Amen. Amen. But that road that leads to eternal life. That's where we need to be. Amen. If, I, if it's ever been a time when I be looking at the things that's going on in the world. I'll just write here in the little Tennessee. The things, the mean things that people are doing to each other, it just lets you know that Jesus is soon to come back. And I tell you, we have got to get rich. I mean, because we don't want no more souls. I mean, it has to be lost to be lost. We want to be there, to be that light in the world. To be that city that set up on a hill that cannot be in. We have got to be the mouthpiece to God. I mean, that we will speak a word of life. He said, out of our bed it was flow with rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. If water is supposed to be living coming out of our belly, it's going to bring life to somebody's soul. Somebody needs their soul delivered. Somebody needs their soul saved. If somebody needs their soul to be broke out of chains, I believe. Been chained down by the devil for so many years, but God is trying to raise us up that we can break and destroy the chains of bondage that have held man in bondage for so long. Amen. And the only way that we're going to do it, we've got to get in that secret place. we got to make up in our mind that the most important thing in our life is getting in a secret place with God. Yes, we love our children, we love our family, but the most important thing in life is that secret place with God. Amen. We was on our way down the highway the other day, and my daughter-in-law, she was texting me on the phone, and she said, uh, where, where are you going to uh, do your anniversary at the anniversary in Arkansas? I said, now you know where I'm going. I said, now, which one would I choose, church or anniversary? And she said, oh, I never asked for that. Amen. God is always first. He wants us to always put him first in everything in our life. He wants us to put him first. He don't want to be second to nothing. Not my family, not my job, not my nothing. You know, some people... Uh, think that they want is the most important thing. Not even that. My finances. It is not more important than God. 
The most important thing in life is that I be about my father's business. And the only way that I can be about his business, I have to be living like God said. I thank God for holding us on today. Amen. I thank God for allowing me to be in the secret place with him, friends. I do. I, I thank and I pray God. I, I thank God for my little. I thank God for our 11 year anniversary of yesterday. I know we didn't get to do anything for it, but still, we really we appreciate each other and being in each other's life for so long. God did it. Amen. Amen. God did it. That's what it's about. It's allowing God to make you one. Amen. He went to Solomon making me one with you, oh God. God also made me and my husband one. And I thank God for that. Because a lot of people are not one with their person that they're married to. They're not. But God is willing to take them there if they desire to be there. Amen. I'm going to let you go a little further on with that phrase, what I'm talking about. Being in the secret place yes, with God. I want you to take over right here and go a little further on with it, okay? Let me do something. Uh, you can do something with it being in the secret place. Praise the Lord, Amen. Now, y'all hear it. Here, 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 the pastor of the church, my wonderful pastor said, Get in a secret place, you're not like being a secret agent. Man. That you, you're an agent that they don't even know about. So you secret, is that right? And, and, and God wants so secret that we can walk in the room. They don't, they don't see us. He, he wants them to see us. Yeah. And that's mean why being a woman in God means that you know what you heal and you know how to help your partner. You know what? Right. Yeah. When, when people get married in the natural, they will be one in their life. And, and, and as, as the pastor was talking about this one, and we get in our spirit that God is one. That whatever you do is just one with that whole body in their right. And God is one as saints of God. Begin to get our man. Set your emotion on God. Get your emotion on you. Man, me, myself, and that thing. Because when you get in that secret place, you don't see things as you see. Right. You see that you have God in that seat, isn't that right? Yeah. Just like you go into a grave and you look out at one of the brothers over there at the grave and you can see it all about that seat because the one is clear enough when you see it. Yeah. When you get everything out of your life that God is again, you will be in that secret place and you know secrets that other people don't know about God. Right. You don't know how to walk, talk, and, and carry a big stick of people using words. Because God will be able to carry the word in their life. In the prayer of the word of God, you got to become one with him, isn't that right? Amen. Because God is the holy God, isn't that right? right. He wants to be holy, isn't that right? When, when they come back in your word to church out, go church it out. Because God has a word for you in it. See, we think that we uh, neglect us because somebody that says us. Now, you don't expect the men and women of God to be the men and women of God. You don't need that what they say. Isn't that right? Because you said, oh, they didn't talk. God is trying to talk through them and tell you, you look into the Word, you're going to find me in that Word. So I mean, he's thinking for that room to go in. And God, I don't care if a room that he ain't been in yet. But if you don't go out there, he's like, I can't tell you that's so all you prepare against the Word. See, God is a God is a God of order, isn't that right? God sets rules of order up. He has set up the saints of God to find the rules of order. You know, so, so being in the secret place of God means that joy. And, and, and he has, and has the Lord again and prophesied to each one. That position says, prophesied to the field. Tell them that you too high, come down. I command you to come down. You know, your field begin to tell them, come down. Yeah. God, when you the out it comes down, I command you to come down. Yeah. So you got to all take the Lord on those fields. You got to all take the Lord on those things. When people is doing you a certain way, you tell the Lord on because if you're the head and not the tail. Right. You, when you're the sick way, you know that the other people don't know. Right. You know how to make things go down in that right path. You said when you know Jesus, you know how to talk to the Lord. The Lord, I don't think to come down right now in that right because He is Lord. You can walk with peace in your heart. Right. Let it go You're a man and stay on him. Right. You're a man and don't let the God that called you in the right. So he called me, he justified me. And I'm going to glorify him in right. Because he healed God by himself. He'll make that bad day come to you. That's why I'm forcing I do for you. I don't know why I'm here. See, 
that will seek him. Yes. God got the Lord to know that will bring me in him. I gave one. Change the down. I gave two. You put ten down your side. So they can't see you coming. All right. Amen. They can't see you coming. I got you here. Yeah. In me. Oh, let me know God got you here. Yeah. Don't worry about people, what they say. God, I got you. I got you. Oh, God. Yeah. When you begin to roll, you know what you tell them out there? Get out of the way of sin. Just tell them they can tell. Shalom, tell them to you. I'm just telling to you now, Lord. I'm going to step and walk to my step and all the back up. Begin to shake each other's hands. Say, you are going to do all this thing out of me now. Stop worrying. Stop controlling. You found a secret place. And God got my mind with all the life. And if you knew, so you found your secret place. You made the punishment of no time. But now I'm going to keep it safe. Yeah.